Hello. Hello there. Is that Tracy Hamlin? Yes, it is. Hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's DJ Gloss here from Sound Fusion Radio in England, in, in London. How are you? Hello. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Very well, thank you. The weather's a bit, um, shall we say, a little bit rainy here in London. <laughs> but uh, apart from that, um, and that's no news because it rains in every single film in London, of course. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> Right. We've had a lot of rain here, too. I'm, I'm right outside of Washington, D.C. Well. Very but yeah, we've, it's not raining today, but we've had some quite gloomy weather here too. Yeah, there's there, there's a, a lot of it about at the moment. It's the time of year, and Australia, of course, have got a heat wave. So um, there you it's go. <laughs> and these tennis players are passing out, and <laughs> it's, it's amazing. unbelievable that they have to play in that kind of heat. Well, yeah, um, I, I had um, some pictures sent to me from relations there um, actually uh, earlier in the week and they were out on a boat looking back to the shore and there was this um, just a big plume of smoke from one of these bushfires there um, and they said it was you know, just absolutely amazing the temperatures that they're having at the moment. Just there you go. A little bit of information for you. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible though. It is, it is. Oh. So you're in London? Yeah, we're just, um, we're south London, we're south of the River Thames here, um, and um, we have been uh, on air now for almost uh, almost one full year as a soul station, and um, and going from strength to strength, I'm very, very pleased to be here, and uh, bringing music to London and the world, um, of uh, soulful and R&B and reggae type genres and jazz and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, Soulful House as well, um, which is uh, where I first came across your tunes, actually. Um, and uh, oh. running Soulful House uh, show on a Thursday night called New Groovin', which um, is uh, one that uh, is one of my favourite shows, actually. Uh huh. So is that what you? So you heard the first song from me that you heard was Never Too Much. Uh, no, uh, look, before that, actually, there there were quite a few Soulful House tunes that you um, that you have uh, sung on um, prior to that. Um, I got music of yours going back to about two thousand and five, which I think was when you started, wasn't it? Yeah, actually, that was even before then. I used to do demos for DJ Spin, so he and I go way way back. Um, we're both from Baltimore, and I've known him since we were in our late teens. And he was working with the Basement Boys, and he would call me in to do demos, and that's how I got on a lot of those songs. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. um, Spen's done a lot of work on 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 the um, on the songs now as well, hasn't he? And um, and uh, just sort of looking at the various mixes coming out, um, the um, the Spen sort of Thomas remixing of of them, fantastic. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, he's dibbling and dabbling and everything. Very talented young man, very talented and a great person. That's fantastic. That's just what you want, though, isn't it? That's brilliant. So do you mind if I sort of start asking you uh, some some sort of interview-type questions? Is that okay? No problem at all. Wonderful. So it says on your bio that you um, revealed your voice to the world at the LA Fountain Blue, age just 11. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, um, I was living in, I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, and there was a popular local band that was auditioning for a singer, yes. and my brother took me to the audition, and they in no way, when I walked through the door, they were looking as if, this little girl, she's cute, but we're not hiring a little girl, but since she's here, we'll let her sing. You know, they didn't say it, but that was the vibe. Yes. And I sang a Natalie Cole song, and they hired me, and I did my, this was on a Monday, I did my first gig with them that weekend, and I sang with them on a regular basis until I then got recruited by another band. So I started singing along the East Coast of the States at age 11. Wow. That's absolutely <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought maybe you'd uh, just sort of made a, a, an appearance on stage or something like that. I didn't realize you'd actually started singing professionally at the age of 11. That's just awesome. I actually start, And it's funny because even before that, I come from a very musical family. And um, we, I always called it, we'd say that we lived in the community house because people always stopped by. We always had company. Mm. And a lot of folks in my family sang. So I was always singing for family members and you know, even before I got in the band at age 11, my neighbors would call me when they had guests and pay me a dollar or two to come and sing <laughs> for their guests. Wonderful. Oh, how lovely. That's brilliant. Oh. 
Just the sort of stories that you only get by speaking to the artist. Absolutely love that. That's brilliant. <laughs> so I've got to ask you this next question then. What are your first musical memories as a child? My first, I'm sorry, say that again, my first musical memories of? Yeah, your first sort of musical memories as a child. What are the first sort of musical things you remember um, sort of doing um, or being part of? You know, I, my first musical memories are of my brothers. Um, I had uh, have three older brothers, and they used to sing to, they used to do the Michael, the Jackson 5 songs, the Temptation songs, and they did all the choreography. And I used to watch them, and whenever one was not there, I was so in. So that's how I started singing more and more. And then when they all were there, I thought, well, I'm jealous because I want to be a part of this. So at five, I was solo. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my earliest memory because, you know, they were, as I said, we had a community house. We always had company. They were always performing for relatives wow. and friends of family. And that's how I got into it. That's, that's absolutely wonderful. Just a great story there. And um, so who who were your um artists sort of idols as a teenager who who did you kind of look up to musically um early on i listened to a lot of natalie cole Wonderful. but of course there was shaka khan and stevie wonder but as i when i got to my maybe my late teens i was introduced to the group Starpoint and renee diggs and renee diggs became my vocal inspiration and um, I was I finally got a chance to meet her, and she personally called me to sing background vocals on her one and only solo album that she did before she passed away. Oh. And, yeah, so that was just meeting her and being around such an incredible human being who was an amazing vocalist. And just to know that she wanted me to be on her project was a, a highlight of my life. And um, as recent as two years ago, Starpoint had a 20-year reunion, and they called me to be the female vocalist and they said I was the only one that they thought of because they knew that she loved me and they always called us vocal twins oh wow so, hence bring your sweet loving back yeah I get it now now oh wow yeah so that's why bring your sweet loving back because we actually the show was in in Lyon France and it was it was just such, that was another highlight for me because when I tell you I studied Renee Diggs I mean, I knew everything that she did, and I just wanted to imitate her because I loved what she did. So as a vocalist now for me, I am able to do what I do because I imitated her and then found my own voice from that. Wonderful. But, yeah, she's incredible. So she's just a huge inspiration for me. What a wonderful story. That's lovely. And I wondered where this, the association with Star Points Bring Your Sweet Loving Back maybe came in. That was actually a question I was going to ask you later, but we've 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 got that now. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. That's really <laughs> great. <laughs> so um you you uh what 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 other artists were were you were your favorites? Did you have uh, did you have sort of uh, anybody sort of in in any sort of odd genres or or were most of them sort of R&B soul genres? What what was the thing there? Yeah, well, I mean, back then, I listened to whoever my family listened to. So they listened to a lot of Motown. They listened to mm-hmm. Patti LaBelle. They listened to my brother um, listened to a lot of Earth, Wind, and Fire and Shaka Khan. You know, so back then, that's who I listened to. But then as I got older, I started just exploring other genres just to hear what was out there. So, you know, on my playlist, I have... Uh, you know, anywhere from, I have a lot of country music, I have rap, I have <laughs> rock and roll, you know, because as I got older, I sang in a lot of what we call here um, corporate or agency bands, so yes. I did a lot of bar mitzvahs and weddings, and, you know, so I had to really broaden um, the, my horizon as far as my the music that I did, and, um, you know, so I used to do a lot of Hebrew music, and, you know, I'm classically trained, so I always call myself a uh, jack of all trades, master of none, because, you know, I'm, I'm classically trained, and I, just to make money and to be able to perform for any kind of event, I learned every genre of music that I could get my hands on. Well, and you also learned quite a few languages. Apparently you can sing in four languages, <laughs> is that right? Yes, well, when I went to, I went to a high school for performing arts, and um, it was a classical uh, singer's curriculum, and learning songs in different languages was a part of that curriculum. Yes. So, yeah, um, unfortunately, I don't speak in those languages, but, you know, I sang in every language, and no matter what the song, I had to go and, and figure out the translation so that I always knew and understood what I was singing about. Well, there you go. Oh, 
That's that's brilliant. That's fantastic. And uh, you were part of uh, Pieces of a Dream. Can you tell us a little bit about that? That was from about 2002, wasn't it? Yes, um, I'm I'm on two of their CDs, and I grew up, you know, once by the time I became a teenager, we were doing Mount Airy Groove, and Pieces of a Dream was just a huge deal back then, and so yeah. I was working with um, a guy named Dave Dyson, who is their bass player, and he said, I think they're going to be needing somebody, you know, and he gave them my number, they called, I sent the demo, and the next day they called and said, hey, we have a gig in three days, can you show up? <laughs> I, <laughs> I showed up, met them, said, hey, I know this song and this key, this tempo, let's do it. <laughs> Wonderful. There you go. You so gave it a whole day to prepare. That was nice, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and then for the talent of that group to, to be associated with them, it's funny because I never felt like I was good enough. But I said, you know, I don't know how I ended up in this jazz group. I'm not a jazz singer, but I am just going to go up here and, and do things the best I know how. <laughs> oh, fantastic. That's brilliant. That's just lovely. And again, another another sort of story angle that you don't get um, without speaking to the artist. That's what I absolutely love about interview. It allows us to sort of get underneath things and, and, and understand things that we you don't get from just reading a, a, a record sleeve or a you know an album cover and so on. That's oh, I know. <laughs> I know, and I'm, I'm that person. I'm always reading the liner notes, and I want to. I always want more information. I want to know how people connected and what they think about, you know, why they choose this song or that song. So I completely understand. That's one of the problems with having music sold as file name dot mp3. I mean, it uh, it really doesn't tell you much, does it? I know, I know, <laughs> and I mean, I love that I can download it and get it right away. But a lot of times when you download, you can't get the booklet with it. That's right. That's absolutely right. And I, I do miss that. As a DJ, I used to I used to love reading through and just to find out, you know, oh, he was on drums. Oh, that was the bass player. You know, that kind of thing. You know, it's, it's all good information. Exactly. <laughs> so then your solo albums, uh, Seasons, Better Days, and uh, This Is My Life. Um, can, you, can you tell us a little bit more about those? Yes, um, that, well, I ended up, I was a music teacher for 10 years. I taught um, kids with dyslexia and music appreciation, which was incredible. And then when I started teaching, um, the beginning of my 10th year, I said, you know what, I'm going to start working on this CD because it's just time for me to do a solo project because I had just, I used to do vocal workshops on the island of St. Lucia. And I had all these folks come in and I would say 90% of them had solo CDs. Wow. And I thought, and it, even the teenagers. So I said, you know what, Tracy, it's time. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, with the record industry, if you're not 17 or 18, they're not trying to do anything with you. So I said, you know what, it's time for me to, to create my own destiny, take matters into my own hands. And I chose some songs called some great producers, songwriters, musicians that I know, and did my first album. And it was, I mean, the response was, it just kind of blew me away because, you know, as an indie artist, by the time you finish recording, you don't have money for marketing and promotion. <laughs> <laughs> so all you can do is pray and keep your fingers crossed. And so, you know, after that, I started doing shows along the East Coast. And then, you know, I decided, hey, it's time for me to do another one. And after I did Better Days, I mean, I just, I, I got into writing more. I was really excited about that. I was in a great place in my life. And then after that, because the music industry is so, you know, just up and down, mm -hmm. you know, you have to work really hard not to get discouraged. And the devil got a hold of me, and I just thought, you know what, I'm tired of this. I'm not going to sing anymore. And then last February, I woke up, and, and, and my husband all along had been saying to me, this is not about you. God has blessed you with a gift, and you're yes. supposed to share it. And I woke up last February and said, you know what, I'm doing a new CD, and I did This Is My Life in eight and a half weeks. Wow. Well, do you know what? I want and to shake your husband's hand because he's absolutely <laughs> right, and what a lovely CD it is, too. That's wow. Brilliant. Thank you. No problem at all. That one just really came together, and I said, you know what, when things are supposed to happen, it's going to be this easy. I mean, and not that it was easy, but it, was not, it wasn't a struggle at all because I have been blessed to have some wonderful friends that are songwriters, musicians, producers. And I just, you know, I was able to get it done because I used a variety of producers. Isn't that just lovely? Isn't that what a lovely place to be? How wonderful. 
That's great. And of course, uh, Seasons, the title tune uh, from that album, um, absolutely love that. Such a, a beautiful, it's a gorgeous vocal on that, beautiful lyrics, loving that tune a lot. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, well, that song came about um, some two of my friends from Pennsylvania. They had a track, and I went up there, and when I heard the track, immediately I just started writing to it. And, you know, I wanted to write a song that equated the ups and downs of life with the seasons of the year. My favorite season is, my favorite season is spring. Yes. And so, basically, that's what it's about, the, the ups and downs of life and just equating your ups and downs to your favorite seasons. And as a matter of fact, I have a show coming up with Frank McComb. He's going to be my special guest, and that's one of the songs I'm doing in the show. Lovely. On February 1st. Wonderful with Frank McCoon. That would be that would be brilliant. Excellent. Wonderful. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna do a duet. So I'm really looking forward to singing with him. I can't wait to hear it. I can't. Hopefully, hopefully we'll hear a recording of it. That'll be fantastic. Yeah. Hopefully as a matter of fact, we're gonna be streaming live. So I'll make sure I send you the information. Oh, please do. That'd be Thanks. great. Love to listen to that. That would be fantastic. And of course, um, on Better Days, the title track from that was number one in the UK soul charts back in 2011. Um. Uh, better days. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, that's the information. Yeah, um, we have here it was number better one. Better days. Yeah, it was number one on the UK soul. Was it the UK soul charts? Because I know this is my life was number one for two weeks. So it was the UK soul charts when Better Days came out. Yes. Yeah. That. That. So uh, I think. Yeah, I remember. Um, Sorry, that's the only problem with uh, international telephones. They cancel each other out when two people talk. I do apologise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember when that happened. I believe I can't. Uh, I had knocked the whispers out of the number one spot, so I thought, "Oh my God, yeah. I love the whispers!" But I'm so happy to be number one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the whispers <laughs> forgave you. I'm sure they did. <laughs> That's brilliant. Absolutely great. <laughs> yeah, and um, so uh, home. Oh, I love that tune. It's soul, soul, soul diva. It's awesome. You sound great on home. Absolutely love it. Thank you. You know, that, that song's such an interesting story. Home is one of my signature songs that back in the day I used to do a lot of talent competitions, and I won a lot of talent competitions by singing that song. I was Miss Baltimore. I was Miss Maryland. And... So Tommy Davis, who also works with Spin, he's yes. one of the owners of Quantize Recordings, they came to me and said, so are you familiar with that song, Home? And I said, am I familiar with it? I made a lot of money <laughs> from winning competitions from singing that song. And so he said, I, I would like to do it, but I want to do it house. And I'm thinking, some songs you don't touch, that's one of those songs, but... I really respect and trust their opinion. So, I, and when it comes to house music, I feel that they know better than me. And they said that um, there's this one club in particular where Tommy DJs. He said they play all this house music, but Home is the only song they play that's not house. Mm -hmm. So he thought it would be a great idea. So I said, "Oh, I'm not totally on board with this, but let's see what happens." And when I heard the track and went and recorded it, it was just like magic. Fell in love with it and. I'm just blown away because, I I mean, Home is from the Broadway musical The Wiz. Mm. And it's interesting because all my life people have compared me to Stephanie Mills, which has just been an honor because I've always adored her. And I just thought, well, if you release this overseas, are they familiar with The Wiz? Do they know about it? So the, we the do. response... <laughs> Well, the response from overseas has just blown me away. I'm just, I'm so excited about this and thrilled that it's been received the way that it's been received because it's been all positive. One, wonderful, wonderful soul power in that tune. Your voice just carries beautifully. And I, I just, I wrote soul, soul, soul diva as I listened to the tune the first time I listened to it. <laughs> and I went back to my notes and I, uh, before the interview today and that's where I got that from. Absolutely uh, love it. It's brilliant. Well, thank you. And it's, it's so interesting because the album Home is released on Quantize, which yes. does house music. So some people have gotten confused, and I said, no, I'm still doing jazz and R&B music, but this was an amazing opportunity that I could not pass up. So, And if you notice, on the Home album, they have some of the songs from my past CDs in its original form. That's right, So we, yes. uh, we would try to boldly step out and 
see what happens. And, you know, some people said, you guys are crazy. What are you doing? But the majority said, wow, you're being leaders and this is great and it's brilliant. So, hey, let's go with it. Hey, you know, every string on your bow, it's its wonderful, you know, and, um, you know, whether it's house, whether it's R&B, whether it's soul, you're sounding wonderful and why not? You know, that's, that's the way to do it. Love it. Thank you. Well, you know what I'm enjoying the most is that, you know, especially overseas, folks just allow you to be you. And because I, I am a singer that can sing a song for any occasion, and it's just all about delivering quality music and making sure the message gets through. And I just love that I can just be embraced for not, you know, just for singing great music, not for having to be a pop music, you know, pop vocalist or having to be an R&B artist or having to be a jazz vocalist. You know, I just, I love that I can do it all, which is what I've always done, and not have to be pigeonholed. That's that's the way to go, I always think. You know, if if you've got the ability to move between those genres, then why not? I mean, it's... Uh it's a, it's a free world out there, and um, and it's lovely to hear. I mean, I've got tunes of yours that are in all different genres, and I play them on different shows and enjoy every single one of them. So there we go. Wow, that is awesome. That <laughs> is awesome. Just as a, a final thing, um, is there anything that you would like to say to your fans uh, in the UK and, and across the world, because we are an international radio station, um, uh, and if you want to point them at your social media or websites, that would also be great. Yes, I'd like to invite everybody to go to my website, tracyhamlin.com, like my fan page on Facebook, or you can also get me on Twitter at, at, at Tracy Hamlin, T-R-A-C-Y-H-A-M-L-I-N. I love to personally connect with all of my fans because I'm just, as I said before, over the moon with the response and the way that people have just embraced me. And I just want to say to everybody, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I love you to pieces for embracing me and supporting my music. Oh, well, we we love you too, and we love everything that you're doing and uh, really looking forward to the new material. And I've got to thank you from the bottom of my heart for talking to us today and being so open and conversational with us. It's absolutely lovely. Thank you so much for that, Tracy. Wow, thanks again, and I'll definitely be in touch. And send me your email, and I'll shoot you an MP3 of that. um, That's wonderful. That's absolutely yep. lovely. Well, um, I know it's um, considerably earlier in the day where you are than it is here, so you have a blessed and beautiful day, and uh, okay. we'll speak real soon. And you do the same. Thank you very much. Take care now. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>